Well, hey guys, Backwaters and Backroads here, obviously. So I need to get you guys up to date on what's going on here. I ended up selling the Super Shanty boat project to a nice couple that lived down in Mississippi. And the reason why I did that, in a nutshell, is I need a boat that will go a lot more places than where these boats are safely capable of going. If you just stick to protected waterways and maybe a little more, um, nothing beats a, a pontoon style or a, a catamaran style boat or a shanty boat like the original Shanty Beagle or this Super Shanty. But I have plans to go to the Bahamas. I also like to go to Isle Royal and some of the offshore locations on the Great Lakes. And I'm starting to feel like I might be pressing my luck if I try to get one of these um, dual hold style boats to, to go those places. So I made a tough choice and I decided to sell it. And I think it went to a really good home. Uh, it took me a, a bit to go down and deliver it, but that's okay. That was just all part of the sale and I was glad to do it. And I'm moving on to some other projects, which I'd like to share with you. So the rest of this video is going to be what I'm up to now. And I think you guys are going to enjoy it. So Let's get to it. Did I leave you behind? Okay guys, so this is the first look at the thousand dollar 1986 Bayliner Trophy 20 footer. It's got a Volvo Penta four-cylinder with a 270 outdrive. This is the first outdrive or inboard-outboard boat I've ever had. I usually stay away from them, but this one was so cheap, and I did a little research on them, and I guess, other than just being really gutless, really slow, I mean, especially by, like, fisherman standards, um, they're actually very bulletproof. They're pretty straightforward. They have the same Volvo motors that the cars had back in the 80s which were known for being really tough. And uh, yeah, and I guess they get really good gas mileage too. And I've already taken this thing out once and I got it up to 24 miles an hour with the trim tab. So I'd say anything over 20 miles an hour is probably getting the job done. Certainly faster than what I'm usually used to. So uh, so yeah, we're gonna take it out and I just changed the oil and the filter on this thing. I'm gonna make sure it's running properly, make sure it has the right amount of oil in it. Maybe do a little fishing for an hour or so and let's, uh, Let's get this series going. The $1,000 Budget Beagle Big Lake Adventure. I might work on that a little bit, but it's gonna be something like that. <laughs> All right, let's do it, guys. show you guys what this thing has in it. Okay guys, so I got a couple of downriggers out. Fishing in, uh, I don't know, 80 feet of water or so. This is a pretty fishable boat. I mean, it's definitely built for fishing. Um, other than the low doghouse here, you got lots of deck to walk, move around on. And the former owner did add that rail for mounting all your gear. And usually the boats I've had, you know, have outboards hanging off the back and you have to fish around the outboards to make sure they don't get tangled up in them and so forth. And I've always heard that it's nice to just have an outdrive kind of out of the way. Um, I need to put a kicker on there in case this never dies. I hope it doesn't today. Um, but yeah, and it idles down, probably doing about a Two miles an hour right now. I don't have a very, I don't have really good electronics on this thing, but yeah, we're in 80 feet of water. Uh, so yeah, the thousand dollar Bayliner Trophy.
So because I can't leave it anything alone, it seems like, I have been contemplating reconfiguring the interior of this boat um, by cutting out, taking this door off and cutting out part of this bulkhead so it opens up the cuddy. This cuddy is one of those staggered ones where someone, you know, your midget friend sleeps there and you cram yourself up in here and then there's actually like a cuddy that goes back in here, which you can see that, which really this is the top of it right here. So I thought about cutting this out, making it a flat floor, putting a, a comfortable couch or something in there, like a shanty boat, and uh, making that just one big cuddy for sleeping in for one or two people. So um, these boats aren't very tough. They're basically molded plastic boats. So I, I would be worried a little bit about the integrity of the hull, but I'm gonna look into it a little more and we'll see what happens. Okay guys, well I might as well try to make a video here while we're slowly trolling for lake trout. So how I got this boat was, uh, I have a friend here in town, I'll see if I can snap a little shot of him. Uh, he wanted to buy a big Chris Craft Commander 38 footer and he was raising money for it. He's kind of a wheelie dealer like I am. And uh, and he, he needed some funds and uh, so he, I bought like three things from him for a really good deal, knowing I could at least get my money back or make, possibly make some money. And one of them was a, a little dual sport motorcycle, which I don't need more motorcycles, even though it was a good one. It's a Suzuki DR200 SE, good one, and good shape too. And uh, so I went to sell it, and a guy contacted me uh, through my ad on Facebook, and he offered to trade this boat. And uh, I only had $1,000 into the motorcycle. It was probably worth closer to 2000 but you know, what, thing, what you get things for, what they're worth, what you sell them for, they're always often very different. So I thought about it, I went and looked at this boat, and normally I stay away from bay liners. Um, they have a bad reputation, but I, you know, I've heard a lot of people say they, they their, their reputation's not really justified, and there's good bay, bay liners and there's bad ones. Um, and the trophies, some people really love them, so I looked this over, decided to take a chance because I don't really have anything to fish with, because I sold everything but my little 12 footer. and. Uh, so far, it seems like a really good trade and a really good deal. It runs good. Um, I think this thing could have some adventures. Um, I'm gonna try it. I mean, I have another boat in the works, which I'm gonna share with you guys as soon as it, uh, if I see if it's gonna happen or not. But um, in the meantime, let's do a little series and have a little adventure with the $1,000 uh, budget Beagle Big Lake Adventure. Does that have a ring to it? <laughs> Alright guys, so that's the test run on the uh, 1986 Bayliner Trophy 20 footer. I think it went pretty well for a thousand dollar bow. What do you think? So, I never thought I'd own a Bayliner. They're kind of a joke in the boat world. People, I have a friend in Alaska who calls them the uh, lining the bottom of the bay. <laughs> the bay liners. <laughs> but, uh, heck, can you pass something like this up for a thousand bucks? I can't. We're going to have some adventures. And uh, one of the first ones we're going to do is we're going to go up to Manitou Island. And there's an island in, uh, I'm sorry, there's a lake inside of Manitou Island. It's called Perch Lake, and I'm going to show you on the map. Uh, and I bought a $50 beat up old aluminum canoe, and we're going to take it up there and we're going to leave it there. We're going to hide it on the shores of that Perch Lake so that every time we go up to Manitou, we can go out and we can fish. So that series, this series coming up is I think going to be called uh, The Lake Inside of a Lake. 
Um, I always got to find creative titles. <laughs> okay, guys. Well, thanks for putting up with me. I know I can be all over the map a little bit, but I do try to stay in the same genres of like boats and motorcycles and back waters and back roads and such. So hopefully that's enough to keep you with me. Um, okay, so I'll see you soon. We're going to get this, we're going to kick this off right now. Okay guys, so I'm on Google Maps here and I just wanted to show you this lake inside of a lake. It's going to be one of the trips coming up. So this right here is Perch Lake. Let's see, it might say it. Yeah, there we go. And we are going to drag a canoe up there and I'm going to bring it from the dock which I believe is right here. And if you might remember from my Gitchagumi series last summer, we went out and explored this lighthouse here. <clears throat> well, we're gonna take the canoe and we're gonna put it somewhere on the shores of this lake. So when we go up there, we can do some fishing. And let's see if there's actually some perch in it, so. Okay, guys. And I'll kind of give you some context here. You can see Pontanagan right there, and the key went on. We're going to go up here, so stay tuned.